This last week and a half has been jam-packed for Valve and the Steam Deck. It started two Thursdays ago when Valve announced the Steam Deck OLED. Right on the day of the announcement, we got Steam Deck OLED reviews and we have been drip fed Steam Deck OLED reviews ever since that day, all the way leading up to the launch of the Steam Deck OLED the following Thursday. Later that night, Valve announced that Steam OS 3.5.5 is finally landing in the stable channel. And if you don't know what Steam OS 3.5 is, it is the biggest Steam Deck update we've seen since launch. It's about a year in the making. I'll cover some of the details later on in this video. And then the day after that, they announced Half-Life Anniversary Edition, which is a huge update to Half-Life. It makes it Steam Deck verified. There's a new Half-Life documentary, which is amazing. So despite the fact that some people have called Steam Deck underpowered here in the latter half of this year. The Steam Deck came back with a vengeance and said, you come at the king, you best not miss. Let's get into everything, starting with the announcement of the Steam Deck OLED. Like I said, it led right into reviews. And the first thing that came out from the reviews is that this is not just a Steam Deck OLED. And in fact, what I took away from my own time with the Steam Deck OLED is that I think this is the best mid-gen refresh we've ever seen. And to an extent, Valve kind of undersold how big this update is. While almost everything has been improved at least a little bit, the three features I think are the biggest and the ones to keep in mind the most are, of course, the OLED display, but also the battery life. Valve chose power efficiency over power and that led to a 50% battery life increase when you couple it with the bigger battery and the more efficient display. And then the third big feature to keep in mind is that the display is now 90 hertz. Now, of course, that's not necessarily going to affect your gameplay very much when you're playing high-end modern AAA games, but it does affect your gameplay in general. I played a lot of Splunky 2 and these sort of lo-fi retro shooters and both really benefited from the improved responsiveness that a 90 hertz refresh rate brings you. Because as you know, it's not just about how fast the game is rendering, but also how fast the game is responding to your inputs. But aside from how great the new Steam Deck OLED is, Valve also announced the limited edition Steam Deck OLED that we were also able to buy on November 16th. I've got to say, against my better judgment, I did place an order on the limited edition. Listen, it looks like a beautiful piece of kit with the sort of transparent, translucent shell in all of those gorgeous orange accents that really help to celebrate, I think, this 25th anniversary of Half-Life. So I'm pretty excited to get it. I'm pretty excited to showcase it to all of you. But yeah, that's not to say that the process of ordering a Steam Deck OLED limited edition was without its problems. Now, in general, it does seem like Valve anticipated that there was gonna be a high amount of volume. They did tweet out beforehand. They said, we feel good about Steam Deck OLED inventory for launch, but have the reservation system ready to switch on if or orders outpace inventory. That said, we are producing units at a quick pace and we will be restocking heavily every week. They also said Steam Deck OLED limited edition will not go into reservation mode. Production is complete for this limited run. And once they sell out, they will be gone. We hope you like them. If there's high demand, we'll have more confidence to do additional colorway options in the future. Now, in practice, what ended up happening for me and for a lot of other folks is that we logged on, we tried to buy the Steam Deck OLED, whether it was the limited edition or not. Many of us got it in our cart, clicked pay, put in shipping details, and when we click continue after putting in shipping details, we were met with some sort of error. Within minutes, the OnDeck account tweeted, Hi, we're working on the Steam store checkout issues. Apologies for the inconvenience. Please hang on while we fix things on our end. Now, of course, there was going to be no way to know when they would fix those issues. So all I did was keep trying to complete my order until it went through. Finally, just as it looked like it was about to go through, I got the final error that said that it was out of stock. The error said your order cannot be completed because one or more items in your cart is currently out of stock. Please try again later. Even though it said, please try again later, at this point, I thought all hope was lost because this was a limited edition product. I didn't think that they would have any more inventory, but it seems like Valve did inventory in waves. And so when someone else said it was back in stock, I immediately tried to place an order and it worked out for me. And it already says that it's being shipped. So cross my fingers that it gets here by the time you're watching this video. In any case, I know a lot of you were met with the same issues. You may have had trouble completing your order. Hopefully you were able to nab whatever you were looking for, but all in all, it was something that was really exciting, right? It harkened back to all of us uh, camping out in front of a store waiting for our favorite console release. There was just this feeling across Twitter and other places that, yeah, we were all waiting for the same thing. So that was really fun to experience. I'm glad you all were there with me. And I honestly can't wait to see 
see what this limited edition looks like in person. More importantly, it does seem like it sold very, very well, which I hope does mean that we will see more colorways in the future. I also do hope, and I don't know if Valve would do this, maybe it would take away from the allure of a limited edition, but I also do hope that Valve releases shells for these limited edition Steam decks because I don't need any more Steam decks, but I would love the opportunity to install these gorgeous cases as they come along. Again, I think that would be a really great idea for Valve, and I think it really goes with their sort of consumer-centered approach. By the way, it is important to point out that that really wasn't possible this time because this shell is for the Steam Deck OLED, and the Steam Deck OLED and Steam Deck LCD internals do differ quite a bit. That's really important to bring up because a lot of people were hoping that they could just take their Steam Deck LCD and upgrade it to a Steam Deck OLED, like maybe they could replace the display or things like that. But honestly, that really really wasn't possible given how different the Steam Deck LCD and the Steam Deck OLED are. The other thing a lot of people ask for is a trade-in program, and I absolutely get that too. I don't feel too strongly about it personally, but I do understand that a lot of people would love that ability to just be able to easily trade in their existing Steam Deck into Valve, and maybe that can go back into the supply for refurbished Steam Deck LCDs. I think logistically that would be pretty challenging for Valve to implement, but it would be interesting nonetheless. And if anyone were to do it, it does seem like something that Valve would do. So one thing about Valve having to now ship the Steam Deck OLED is that a lot of the software that supports the Steam Deck OLED is all in SteamOS 3.5 which up until last week was in the preview or beta channel. And so I knew that they would have to ship SteamOS 3.5 into the stable channel before Steam Deck OLED got into people's hands. And in fact, that's what they did the night that the Steam Deck OLED went up for sale. So that means you all should have access to SteamOS 3.5, whether you're getting that new juicy OLED or you're sticking to the LCD model. I do have a video out there that goes over the SteamOS 3.5 feature. So I'm gonna link that in the description because Honestly, not much has changed between the time that it first landed in the preview channel and I did my video to now when it lands in the stable channel. But nonetheless, I will go over some of the features pretty quickly here. First, of course, is the ability to adjust the display colors. You can change the color vibrancy and color temperature so that even if you're on the Steam Deck LCD, you can make the colors look warmer, cooler, more saturated, less saturated, all of that good stuff. Of course, in order to support the Steam Deck OLED, they introduced support for HDR and VRR, but even if you're on a Steam Deck LCD, you can take advantage of this if you are docked to a display that supports these two things. Your mileage may vary depending on what dock you're using, but if you are using the Valve official dock, both of these features do work for the Steam Deck LCD. Likewise, Valve has collapsed the two sliders for frame rate limiting and refresh rate into one slider that is just a frame rate limiter and it will adjust the refresh rate depending on the frame rate limit that you set. This one was a relatively recent change, but it is a pretty good one. One feature that has gone virtually overlooked, even though I did demonstrate it in my video, is the scaling. You can now stretch what's on screen to fill the entire screen. So for example, if you're playing a 16 by nine game with black bars on the top and bottom, you can now stretch and it'll fill in the full 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Of course, for some people that is heresy and blasphemy, but honestly, for a lot of games that I play, it really is not that big of a deal. It is a small stretch. And for many games, it doesn't really feel like it adds any tangible distortion. Another quick big one is that external storage devices are now auto mounted when they are connected to the Steam Deck. That is huge, especially if you have one of those M.2 docks from JSOX or anything like that. If you love emulation, certainly try and see if the performance of your favorite emulator is improved on this new Steam OS because an SMT bug has now been fixed with this update. This may also help CPU bound games like Baldur's Gate 3 and Starfield. And some of the last important things that were updated in SteamOS 3.5 is that the way shaders are compiled is now a little bit different. So you actually need less storage for shaders and they compile a lot faster. So you should see fewer stutters. Also, the performance overlays have been overhauled a bit, especially the second one. But also you can create your own performance overlays if you go over into desktop mode. You can see how I did that in the video where I go over SteamOS 3.5 in detail. And then finally, of course, is the voltage offset in case you want to under undervolt your Steam Deck. Once again, that is regardless of whether you have the LCD or the OLED model. 
So yeah, this is all pretty awesome. SteamOS 3.5 has literally been over a year in the making. Who knew that all this time it was leading up towards Steam Deck OLED? It's great to see Steam Deck OLED here, as I mentioned earlier, but it's also really great to see SteamOS 3.5 finally land in the stable channel. Now it's on to SteamOS 3.6. Who knows what Valve is cooking up next? They really have a habit of looking towards mods and things like that for inspiration and really replacing those features that community members may have implemented. So personally, I would like to see, and I kind of expect them to add the ability to record like the last 30 seconds or something like that, which is something that is already implemented by a Decky plugin called Decky Recorder. I'd love to see an official implementation from Valve. So maybe who knows, SteamOS 3.6 brings us the ability to record. But yeah, on top of the launch of the Steam Deck OLED, as well as the limited edition and the launch of SteamOS 3.5, it turns out Valve was not done. So they had one more announcement up their sleeve for last week, and that was the 25th anniversary update to the original Half-Life. Alongside this update, they made it so that you can claim it now as free to keep through the end of the month. So definitely do that if you haven't done so already, or if you don't already own Half-Life. And they released a Steam Deck anniversary documentary, which was produced by the venerable No Clip Studios. And we got gems from Gabe Newell, like late is just for a little while, suck is forever, which is really like the most American way to phrase that Miyamoto quote. So heck yeah. This update brought with it a lot of changes that make it easier to play on a modern system, including better control pad support, better widescreen support, all that good stuff. And in doing all of this work, Half-Life is now Steam Deck verified for the very first time. So once again, if you haven't played it, now is a golden opportunity to do so. By the way, this has been an absolutely amazing month for video games on PC. There's been Robocop, Rogue City, Star Ocean, The Second Story R, The Invincible, Persona 5 Tactica, Like a Dragon Gaiden, The Man Who Erased His Name. And most of these games play well on the Steam Deck. So yeah, once again, you come at the king, you best not miss. All right, I hope you're having a wonderful week. I'm out of here. Deck gang out. Goodbye.